Hello everyone, this is K3GM, and I'm going to document the construction of a 05 30 foot flagpole antenna. Now, I chose this antenna because I live on a very visible corner lot in this neighborhood. So, I'm in the process of digging this hole. I have to go down 48 inches. Um, right now I'm down about 30. So I'm digging by hand. It's springtime. The dirt is very uh, moist and it's easy to dig through. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, for this process, I have a post hole digger, uh, a shovel to shave the sides down to the required 12 inches, and a digging bar, which is absolutely necessary. If you're going to dig this hole by hand, you must use a digging bar. A post hole digger will not do it. Um, it'll take forever. So anyway, uh, that's where we are right now. And we'll uh, pick it up when I get a little bit deeper. Today we're going to fill the hole with concrete. I've dug the hole to the prescribed depth of 48 inches and uh, put some gravel at the bottom. And now I'm ready to fill it with concrete. So I have a an old mortar boat that I'm going to use, a uh, bucket for water. Uh, there is the 12 inch form cut off to about two feet and some rebar and the shovel to, uh, to mix it and to dump it in the hole. I've had some problems the past week and a half with uh, a lot of rain and then the hole filling with water. So today is uh, the second day where the water has cleared from the hole and I thought it would be a good day to uh, get this job done. So what I'm going to do is fill the hole with some concrete, place the rebar in it, and when I get near the top I'm going to insert the, the tube form which is going to stick up uh, several inches above grade. And when I get that done I'm going to place the mount into the concrete. It has to be uh, shimmed up about the thickness of a 2x4 off the concrete. This is to allow drainage. So we'll get going and get this done. Well, I completed the pour a little earlier and now the concrete is just sitting to cure. Um, you can see I tapped my form in and left a couple inches above grade. It was recommended to place this 2x4 under the mounting plate to lift it up for drainage and also to allow for adjustment. If you can see underneath there, the bottom nut is uh, protected with electrical tape keep the concrete off the threads. When the concrete's cured, I'll remove this board, remove the plate, and then take the uh, electrical tape off, and then I'll have all that adjustment to uh, plumb the antenna. The plan's called for six and a half 60 pound bags of concrete to fill 48 inches. I used just short of seven bags. So I used a little more than what they recommended. I also have a bag in the garage for uh, just in case, but I didn't need it. So there you have it. Just have to wait now for the concrete to cure and then we can uh, remove the plate. The uh, studs will be in their correct locations and we can uh, start putting the antenna together. Okay, it's been about two weeks since I poured the concrete. Uh, it was cured, so I pulled the uh, cardboard form off down to grade. With that done, I decided to attach my radial plate. I've been looking at this for a while and discovered that a DX Engineering radial plate fits perfectly over the gussets of the flagpole base. So. What I did was I flipped everything upside down, traced the holes of 
the base onto the uh, radial plate and then I centered the holes and I drilled them out with the largest drill that I had in my shack and that was a half inch uh, bit. Uh, it still wasn't big enough so I moved to a step bit and I drilled the holes out further to seven eighths of an inch. Uh, the step bit worked pretty good on the uh, stainless steel material and I was very pleased uh, that it uh, went through so easily. So at seven eighths of an inch it fits perfectly over the studs of the flagpole uh, base. So with that done I decided I was going to add uh, some some wires. I started out putting one or two wires in and before you know it I had 20 down. Uh, the wires were used in another uh, location uh, were part of another vertical project. Uh, before I moved I pulled them up coiled them up put them in a five gallon bucket and I had uh, all these wires that I could use here at this new location in New Jersey. So um, all the wires are held down with these U-pins. Uh, I make these at night while I watch television. Uh, they're about seven inches long. I bend about an inch over uh, my wife's crochet hook. And uh, I can make a whole mess of these in one evening. I usually do them in batches of 100. The radial wires are 32 feet long. And I use about 10 to 12 of these staples uh, in each wire so there's quite a few of these staples in the lawn right now uh, they're made out of uh, steel it's a very thin coating of paint which rusts very quickly and once the wire rusts it sort of anchors itself to the soil uh, really holds it tightly in place until the grass and the thatch grow over the wires as you can see I have quite a few in already I have about half of what I intend to put in uh, I'm going to stop at 40, I think, on this project. So we'll see how that goes. I wanted to talk a little more about these U-pins that I made to hold the radial wires down against the lawn. Uh, I use about 10 of these for a 32-foot uh, radial wire. So you have to make a lot of them if you want a lot of radial wires. And I believe I have about 21 in so far, or about half as many as I intend to put down. Now I make these at night watching television and I feed out a bunch of wire on the on the carpet and then uh, I cut these uh, as wide as I can reach my thumb and little finger. Um, so I first cut the, the wires and then I straighten them out and then uh, I bend them over uh, one of my wife's crochet needles but you, you could use anything you could use a pencil uh, if you wanted. So I mean I see people buying these things uh, paying a lot of money for, I don't know, a hundred of them. And uh, so far, I probably have uh, double that amount in the 20, 20 wires or so that I have in place. So save yourself a lot of money and make these. You can buy the wire at Home Depot. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, the wire that you use to tie uh, rebar together. But... Uh, Home Depot also has baling wire, which uh, really works great. It's a little heavier. I've used it in the past, and it rusts very quickly, and uh, it really anchors itself tightly in the lawn. By the way, at the end of the wire, I use a very large nail. I, I don't recall the, uh, the size of the nail, but it's as big as Home Depot can sell. It's not galvanized. Uh, it's just steel, and that, again, is so it will rust in place. So... Um, Eventually, I expect uh, this wire will just corrode away, but by then, the, I expect these wires to probably be a half inch to an inch under the lawn. So the thatch grows up over the lawn, and I know they're there. I won't thatch this area of the lawn, um, and uh, I think it works great. Also, uh, what needs to be done is the trench from the antenna to the house. Uh, in this case, my trench is about 90 feet long. Uh, I'm using a uh, trenching shovel to dig the trench. Uh, it's very difficult cutting through the zoysia grass uh, that grows here uh, at my home in New Jersey. So what I 
do is I have to cut the sides of the trench uh, with a machete. And once the, uh, the rhizomes have been cut, uh, the plug of soil digs out very, very easily. So it's coming along I'm about halfway done. The antenna assembly is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of putting one tube inside another. The materials used is nothing short of extraordinary. Uh, it's real, real heavy. And right now I'm trying to get an idea of how much muscle I'm going to need to stand this up. I have three sections out here now. I uh, believe there's two more in the garage. So uh, it's just a matter of putting one tube inside the other. You can see that they've just removed a, a little bit of uh, aluminum. So this tube will fit inside this one here. Okay, to join the two pieces together, I'm using uh, JetLube SS30. It's uh, pure copper in a uh, some sort of a lubricant base. So it's just a matter of uh, rubbing this on. And when you get enough on, you just rub this in to the aluminum and slide the two pieces together. Uh, this will make removal of the pieces should I ever want to take it down or for maintenance or whatever it'll make it much easier I don't want the aluminum to corrode together so it's just a matter of uh, putting the pieces together line up the holes here's the hardware they give you it's a uh, stainless hardware There you have it, it's that easy. Okay, since the last time we recorded anything, I put together the flagpole, all 30 feet of it, and uh, it's ready to be put up. Before we uh, walk it up, I'm gonna put the halyard line in the top and uh, get it ready to hoist. This is the top of the pole. Uh, it's supplied with a uh, finial and this top piece that has a plastic pulley for the halyard. I finished adding the radials at least for now. I've got 42 in and I can add more if uh, necessary. Uh, we're going to go with this amount and see how the antenna plays and if it works uh, good we'll leave it at, at that. If I feel I need more I, I have a few more spots. I also have a number of radials that are attached to one lug um, and so I can overpopulate the uh, individual screws on the radial plate. Uh, with maybe three per per screw. Uh, again, these radials were from a previous installation uh, where I had uh, well over a hundred radials and about 5,000 feet of wire in, in the ground. Also, uh, I've installed a uh, eight-foot ground rod. Pounded that in the other day. It went in without any trouble in the, uh, the sandy uh, Jersey soil. Now, I plan to add a, uh, some sort of a static drain between the radiator and that ground rod uh, because I'm going to be using an ICOM AH4 at the base of the antenna. Uh, the tuner, I don't believe, has any uh, gas tube arresters, so I'm going to put something in there to help drain away the static charge. I also plan to add a simple spark gap uh, between the ground plate and the radiator uh, in case there is a, a close or possibly even a direct strike. I'm hoping that that will help take some of the charge away from 
uh, the coax and uh, where it enters the house. I thought I'd touch briefly on the entrance panel that I devised. Uh, it's nothing more than a uh, typical basement window. Uh, I removed a pane of glass and I inserted a sheet of aluminum panel in there. And it's easy to drill holes and I use uh, bulkhead connectors and I attach my transmission line uh, to the bulkhead connectors. So I'm going to add uh, one more, probably right here, for the uh, transmission line from the flagpole antenna. Uh, I have it coming out of a piece of one inch PVC pipe, and I plan for it to come up here and then go right into the into the panel. Uh, since my last chapter. Uh, my son came over, he lives across the street, and we stood the flagpole up without any trouble. Two people can do it, no problem. So I bolted it down, and uh, as you can see, I'm flying our flag already. Half staff at the moment in New Jersey for the COVID-19 uh, victims. So uh, with that, I decided it was time to pull the coax and control cable. As I might have mentioned earlier, I'm using Heliax. Uh, this is the third attempt. The first two attempts were failures. Um, I just couldn't push and pull it through the one inch uh, PVC conduit. If I could do it again, I'd probably use two inch. Uh, I brought this down from my previous uh, QTH in uh, Massachusetts, so I decided to use it again. So it's in conduit. Uh, what made the third time successful is uh, the cable lube. I uh, smeared it on and kept pushing. My son was pulling and we got it through with relatively uh, little effort. So now that's done. Uh, over here, uh, until I get everything set up, I have a direct ground from the flagpole to uh, an eight foot ground rod. And I've also tried this. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but when everything's set up and running, uh, I have fashioned a uh, spark gap because I'm putting the tuner here on this post and I don't believe the tuner has any uh, static suppression. So in the case of a catastrophic strike, I'm hoping that this little spark gap may help. It's a four gauge wire and it's directly grounded. So uh, I don't know if it'll work, but the radiator I don't believe is, uh, has any uh, protection in the event of a, of a strike. There's no gas tube or rusters uh, that I can see in the tuner. So uh, we're almost there. Uh, the next chapter I'll have the tuner on and I'll show you the grounding strap that I fashioned and uh, hopefully we'll get it running. Today I wanted to finish up uh, documenting this project. So I wanted to show you uh, what has occurred in the last couple of weeks since the last time I videoed anything. Uh, first thing you'll notice is uh, the tuners in place uh, the transmission line and control line for the uh, tuner have been uh, routed through the, the conduit. Uh, you also notice that all the radials have been uh, covered with grass. There, there are there's some spots where they might be visible. There's no grass here and you can see a wire. But if you look at the plate and see all the radials I have attached to it, uh, none are showing in the lawn. And they're getting uh, covered over with uh, grass very quickly. So what I did uh, in the beginning is I put uh, a uh, large hose clamp around the radials and it holds them in place, kept them tight against the form. And uh, that way, if someone picked up the radial with their toe, it didn't rip it all the way back to the plate. It just left it right there and they were easily repaired. 
So anyway, uh, here's the uh, the antenna tuner. It's a ICOM AH4. Uh, probably a better description would be an antenna coupler. It's not a antenna tuner, but essentially that's what it does. Uh, I have the uh, the connection from the the output to the radiator, and down here is my connection to ground. So I just took a, a two inch wide strip, connected the uh, radial plate right to the tuner. Uh, I also have my uh, transmission line. It, it goes from uh, Heliax to uh, uh, regular flexible coax and then goes into the, uh, the bottom of the tuner. I've made a few contacts already and it works fantastic. So I'm very happy, uh, very pleased with the performance. So I, uh, I highly recommend uh, this, uh, this flagpole. It, uh, it's, it's really a beast. Um, I also recommend the company, regardless of what you buy from them. Uh, the owner is there from the very beginning. Uh, initial questions. When you place your order, he's right on top. Uh, he emailed me a couple times and wanted to know how everything was doing. Uh, Tom's a great guy, and uh, there's nothing he won't do to see that your uh, antenna gets on the air successfully. So uh, right here, I have what I refer to as a keeper, uh, as in a, a keeper bar on a magnet. And uh, when I'm not here, I replace the uh, little connection, the little jumper from the coupler to the radiator. I put this on, and this is a direct ground to the ground rod. So I'm hoping if there's ever any uh, storms or, or uh, anything like that while we're away, or even if we're home, um, that this will take the brunt of the stroke and instead of going into my... Uh, house. Also, I mentioned this earlier, uh, I created a little uh, spark gap and I guess it's about a eh, eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch gap between the radiator and uh, the number four copper wire. Uh, I have it bolted to the base which in turn goes to uh, ground. Back at my entrance panel, uh, I have put in uh, a ground connection. Um, here's my here's my second ground rod, a couple feet out from the house, goes to the panel. But then I have another wire. You can see it right here. This goes to my utility ground. So there you have it. Uh, my uh, trench is slowly getting filled in. I plan to get a load of topsoil and uh, fill in any ruts that I've created. I hope I've been able to show you uh, something of the construction process. This is not something that you want to do or can do in a couple of days. This is a, uh, this is a project. Uh, you have to, uh, I would say the hardest part was uh, digging the hole. Uh, putting the antenna together is, takes maybe all of 10 minutes. Um, most of it, uh, most of the labor is digging the hole and pouring the concrete. After that, the radials get put in little by little. You do a few, there might, you might have other responsibilities and you can't, uh, can't complete it, so you do it when you can. Also, I didn't mention, but I have the uh, pole lit with uh, uh, a light at night so I can keep my flag flying. Uh, we had bad weather forecasts, so the flag isn't up today. So there you go, the uh, 05 30 foot flagpole. Good luck with yours.